Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today at Swamp Up 2020. I'm super excited to be here and talk about cloud native GitOps with Anthos and JFrog Artifactory. I'm Archie, hybrid cloud specialist at Google. And as you can see, my cloud is suit and my background, I'm a cloud native ambassador. As a CNCF ambassador, I'm actively engaged in promoting community efforts and cloud native as an organizer of Kubernetes meetups. This year, I'm helping to organize the first Kubernetes days in Canada. If you'd like to join us as a sponsor, speaker, or attendee, hit me up at Twitter. With that, I would like to welcome my today's co-speaker, Kyle Bassett from Arctic. Kyle? All right. Thanks for the introduction, Archie. So excited to be here to present at the JFrog Swamp Up event 2020. Uh, virtual, obviously, this year, but we're uh, making the best of it. I brought my uh, my friend here with me to keep me company during this presentation. So, yeah, quick introduction. I'm Kyle Bassett, one of the co-founders and partners at Arctic. Um, we do a lot of services around DevOps and Kubernetes and helping customers on their transformation journey. I'm Canadian, and um, we've also been very lucky to be a Anthos design partner from day one with Google. So much of this uh, presentation today is going to be a demo. I'm going to show off some of the aspects that my team, especially Daniel, has been building. And we're going to show you some of the CICD aspects of this, and we're going to leverage some of the JFrog toolkit. So let's get into it. I'll give you a quick uh, breakdown of the workflow, and uh, we'll get into the demo. One of the aspects that we feel pretty strong about is the roles and responsibility of the developer and the operators. We feel that the operations team in their best interest should be able to automate all the infrastructure aspects of their Kubernetes environments and also the CI/CD flow that goes along with that. That way developers can focus on what they do best, write code. That should drive automated builds and automated testing and they can get instant feedback. The other side effect of that is the operations team can benefit from consistency across the environment and any policies and procedures that they want implemented, they can implement them. The development teams will start to follow the rules based on feedback they get from their unit testing and automated testing. And everybody is happy and we get more results for the business and quicker releases out the door. In this demo, we're going to get into a real live example and show you some workflows. The base tools we're going to use is uh, Anthos as the platform. We're going to use that running in GCP and GKE. We're going to use GitLab CI, Argo CD. We're going to leverage Helm templates for the deployment aspects. And we're going to leverage JFrog Artifactory for the images and Helm templates as a recur repository. And we're going to leverage also JFrog X-Ray to make sure our code is safe and intact. The basic use case is developer goes ahead and checks in some code. That's going to go ahead and kick off a trigger and GitLab is going to run through and do code climate checks. It's going to build with Kaneko and Jib. It's going to push to the JFrog Artifactory repository and do the JFrog X-Ray. In the end, Argo is going to kick in and we're going to be able to deploy to our dev clusters and our production clusters. We're going to leverage different branches for that strategy. We've also got Open Policy Agent enabled. Anthos Config Management is looking after all the configuration of all these clusters. We're leveraging a GitOps strategy, so all of our code is in Git. It's going to get pushed out when it gets committed to the appropriate registries, and things are going to be automated. All right, so let's get into the demo here. In our GCP console, you can see we've got an Anthos GKE cluster deployed, and it's uh, referring to it as dev. We've also got a production cluster deployed. In this case, we'll do show you the environments, queue a cube CTX, and you can see our environments here. In this case, this is our production environment. You can see it's uh, got the iceberg tag on it. There's our uh, dev tag of the demo. Have a look at our namespaces. You can see we've got an Argo CD space, a bank, we've got our Anthos config management, gatekeeper, Istio, a few other things that we've got in here. Go ahead and look at our pods in our config management namespace. You can see we've got an importer, a monitor, a sinker. These are the pods that look after pulling the code from Git. And you can see we've also got Gatekeeper deployed in the cluster. So Gatekeeper is going to look after all our policy and all our policy management that we want to push down to the clusters and the rule sets. So let's have a look at the GitLab repo. We've done a clone and here we've got our dev cluster YAML our um, production cluster YAML, we've got some selectors. So in this case, we were calling it Anthos Dev. This is our dev environment. You can see we've got our same thing here, our cluster selector. 
So we've got an annotation here for the selector and we've got a production one. Same thing, you'll see we've got an annotation for the selector for production. One thing I'll show you around the policy manager here, we're gonna go ahead and just do a test run of a container. So in this case, you can see we've got this debug pod and we've been able to create it. Now let's go ahead and push out a policy using uh, our gatekeeper. So it's a simple YAML file. We're gonna go ahead and, and save this YAML. And the big thing here, as you can see, we're referencing the artifactory endpoint here. So this is going to say we're only allowed to pull images from our secure artifactory registry in the namespace of the bank. So let's go ahead and commit this into our repo, and that's going to push this rule out to all of our clusters. So we'll go ahead and we'll delete um, that pod since it's already deployed. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and try to deploy the exact same pod. What's going to happen is our gatekeeper policy is going to kick in and say we're not allowed to do it. You can see it's saying denied because we're not pulling from the appropriate registry. We're trying to pull from Docker Hub. So let's go in and talk about the application we're deploying. This is an Anthos Bank application, a sample application. It's a mix of uh, Python and Java applications. You can see it's got a load generator and a front end. We've got some different services, uh, ledger, balance reader, transaction history, and you can see we've got a couple Postgres uh, databases that are looking after our state. So what we've done is we've cloned this into our GitLab um, infrastructure. I'll give you a quick view of the application. We log in as a test user. We can send some payments, send a payment to Bob. We'll give Bob some money. And what that's going to do is send a, a payment to Bob and then reduce our balance and, and store that in the database. So let's go back into our repo and you can see we're controlling, we're saying we want an Argo CD namespace in our bank. So Anthos Config Management is looking after all these aspects. It's going to push this to every cluster that's being managed. There's the namespace repo. If we have a look under Argo CD, we've got some different things. You can see we've got that deployment YAML. Um, we've got the app dev and the production. So those are going to ref reference the various production environments. And we've also got our ingress configuration and what namespaces we want uh, configured that we showed you earlier. So have a quick look at the YAML. You can see this is our um, dev uh, the URL that we're using. It's listing on port 80. It's a virtual service. And then we would also define this as a production um, for our production environment. So you can see we've got a selector here that says selector environment dev, and that's going to match our dev URL. We've also got the prod that's going to match our prod. So in this case, we're having configuration for two. We're also using Argo CD. Well, you can see we've got one running in dev, and we'll also have one running in the production cluster here. And Argo CD is going to look after all the syncing of the application aspects. We've got the Helm templates. Helm applications are enabled. And then if we look in our config management namespace back here, we'll go in and look at uh, this YAML configuration. So let's look at the dev one. So you can see we've got our annotation here. And this one's for dev. And then the image tag I want to pull is, you can see the ID right there. The value is going to be there for the dev URL. And then we've got our secure repo here pointing at the Helm templates and we've got our target version. Let's log into the JFrog platform, have a look around here. We can look at our artifacts. You can see all our Helm templates are stored in here, different versions. Let's search for the bank ones. There's all of the bank versions in our Helm templates. There's our latest. We've also got our Docker repo in here. If we have a look at our Docker repo, these are all our Docker files, and this is a secure repo that we've uh, approved with Gatekeeper. If you look at the account DB, you can see all the different uh, image tags that we've got, and they're going to be matched to the SHA and GitLab. Jump back into GitLab, and we're going to simulate a merge request and show you how that would work. In this case, we'll go have a look at our source repository here. We'll uh, pull up the appropriate branch. And you can see we've got this Arctic feature branch and our master, that's the one that's linked to production. But we've, uh, we're gonna put a new feature in here and we wanna push this to our dev cluster. 
And then we'll eventually push this to master once it's been approved and go through our workflow. Go back to merge requests here and we'll go create a merge request and let's go ahead and pick the branch. So we're going to say Arctic feature, push this to dev. We can do a quick compare on these and we'll add a message. So let's turn this into Arctic Bank. We've got Anthos Bank. Well, you know, we just need some free code. And we can have an Arctic Bank. Why not? Uh, we've got our Kubernetes cluster, so we might as well have a bank. We don't want to delete the source branch. We'll go ahead and submit the merge request here. Now, you can see as soon as we submit the merge request, we've got a pipeline deployed. If we dive into the pipeline, you're going to get to see the workflow here a little bit. So first thing it's going to do is go ahead and do a code quality. Then it's going to go ahead and do the build. It runs through a bunch of different aspects of the build. You can see it's building the different containers, go through the Docker images for all these. It's also going to use Jib. Uh, Jib's a tool provided by Google used to build containers. And then the third stage, and then we're going to stage our Helm parameters in our ACM repo. Let's go and quickly show uh, the ACM repo. We've got a pipeline staging folder here. And you can see we've got a YAML file here and it's a skeleton. And you can see we're providing environment variables here and then anything in dev with this annotation, but the prod will have an also a separate annotation that I showed you earlier. Namespace we target is gonna be bank uh, there's the uh, server and the parameter we want to leverage is the image tag and the host name. You can see we variableize those. Let's dive back into our pipeline. Here's our image ID. You can see it's in GitLab. So it'll come in as an environment variable and also our front end will come in based on that annotation. So let's go under our pipeline settings and we can look at the variables and all the variables are set in here. Here's our front end URL for dev, URL for prod, um, all the different variables we want here. We showed you that earlier. That's also managed by the ingress configuration and those config management. So let's log into um, Artifactory and you can see all our different tar files there. Go back and have a quick look at our pipeline. You can see our pipelines running and it's making its way, it's done its code quality, it's going to start to build these images, you can see it's going through, most of the images are built we'll show you how this pipeline's configured if we go back and look at our repo here now this pipeline actually comes out of another repo here it's a separate repo and you can see the different stages here, code quality build, stage for helm helm deploy to dev, helm deploy to prod and then here's the simple code that goes along with that that looks after the pipeline. You can see here we've got the deploy to prod, deploy to dev. So this is the workflow. So build stage is done. And Helm parameters are done. So the CI process is done at this point. Now if I was a release manager, I'm going to go ahead and merge this. I feel that uh, it's in a good state and it's passed all my pipeline checks so I trust it so I'll go ahead and merge it and you can see another pipeline is kicked off this one's got one job and it's gonna do a helm deploy to dev we can go and uh, dive into that and see real-time what's going on let this run now let's go look at the Argo environment and we can see the synchronization so here's all the configuration and deployments and you can see it's synced but um, 21 hours ago was the last time it, it got synced but what we can see here is if we go in to the namespace under Argo CD you can see 24 seconds ago that YAML got updated if we dive in here you see the image tag the values ending in 07 and there's the host name that's the same. Go back to Argo CD and now you can see that it's been updated as of a few seconds ago. And if we keep an eye on a watch command looking at our um, Kubernetes environment or application, you can see that some 
pods are getting terminated and recreated based on the new images. If we go back to the JFrog environment, let's check by last modified. And there's the image and we can have a look at the x-ray status of this image for example. X-ray data and you can see the security um, vulnerabilities it's calling out in this image, any licenses that we should be considering. Now let's go from dev and let's uh, you can see here our dev environments have been updated now we have a bank of arctic instead of a bank of anthos but now that we've tested this it's time to uh, push this out to production so if we go back to GitLab let's go to our merge request this time and we'll create a new merge request now in this case we want to put this from dev to prod since we've done our test we don't want to delete the source go ahead and submit the merge request and that's uh, green check so we can go ahead and merge this. Now, as you can see, it kicks off another pipeline. Now, this is the Helm Deploy to Prod pipeline. So we've already got our artifacts, and we're going to push these out to our production environment. Now, if we go back and look at Argo CD, you can see five minutes ago, and this is 21, and this has got the old image tag. Now, if you look in Prod Argo, you can see we haven't synced for 21 hours. So our pipeline's running here. You can see it's deploying artifacts. It's finishing up. And now we should get this picked up. You can see it's out of sync. It's doing a quick synchronize. Now this is going to refresh all of those pods that are in our production environment and redeploy our application inside production. So to the right here, you can see the containers are, are getting um, killed and they're respawning off of the new image. You can see they've been up for five seconds and, and prod is up and running. So prod very shortly will be in the same state as dev. If we go ahead and log into our prod environment, you can see it's Bank of Bank of Arctic now instead of Anthos. And we've got all our data in, in check here. So you've got to see uh, the workflow and how it works. This is one way to do it. Obviously, you can put more check and balances. You could add more security. But really, this is showing the power of we're just leveraging Anthos Kubernetes clusters and Anthos config management is managing all the environment aspects. We're leveraging some really good tools in GitLab and Argo CD, obviously the Artifactory Toolkit and the security scanning aspects. And, you know, as a developer, I'm able to just focus on writing code, checking it in. Operators are building the rule sets for me and helping me make my life easier. But at the same time, we've got secure infrastructure that's reliable and we can push code out in a real fashion and get those new releases to market. So I hope you enjoyed the demo. I'll throw things back to Archie to close things off. Any questions, feel free to reach out to us and we'll, we'll definitely put out some more content. My uh, colleague Daniel did a great job building this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. And back to our presentation, Cloud Native GitOps with Anthos and JFrog Artifactory. Since we're at the JFrog conference, we don't need to explain what is Artifactory. However, you might be interested to learn more about GitOps, Cloud Native, and Anthos, and how this tech can work together with JFrog. First few words about Cloud Native and CNCF. It all started with Google open sourcing and donating their internal container scheduling system, known as Kubernetes, to CNCF. Since then, CNCF grew to a huge ecosystem of projects that nicely integrated with each other. Right now, CNCF hosts and supports 10 graduated 16 incubation and more sandbox open source projects. You can check out the latest state of CNCF ecosystem at landscape.cncf.io. In our today's demo, we'll be using some of the CNCF projects that are highlighted with the green checkboxes. Finally, Google remains top contributor to CNCF and continues to support foundation. For instance, this year, Google Summer Core Internship will invite students to help contribute to open source software development, including Kubernetes. Okay, now let's talk about GitOps. As Kelsey said, Kubernetes is a new SSH and it's becoming a standard platform to deploy software. And users want to learn a better way of deploying Kubernetes code natively, safely, and securely, and reliably too. So GitOps became a hot topic of 2020, and there is a huge demand for it now. GitOps, a new paradigm, a new set of principle based on the decade of the DevOps best practices around continuous software delivery. It is essentially a set of practices to use Git pull requests to manage infrastructure, config, policy, and application configuration. That's why we say here, continuous anything. First principle of the GitOps is to specify intended state 
with the declarative configurations. Since we're deploying code to Kubernetes, it's our YAML manifest, could be customized or Helm charts. Second principle, the desired state is defined and versioned in Git. And so Git treated as the single source of truth. And all changes to the configuration can be automatically applied using pull request mechanism. Most probably you'll be saying, well, this is, we had this before, so what's the difference? Well, I hope the final principle can clarify what I mean when I say GitOps. Kubernetes is our GitOps runtime that pull syncs Kubernetes state from Git via additional GitOps agents, operators, or some call, some of them call controllers. This controller deploy and reconcile the state of the Git. The controller also ensures that no configurations drifts are present. Here's a simple scenario of the GitOps continuous delivery pipeline. Step one, developer commits a code to GitHub. Step two, code get reviewed and tested and then merged to a subsequent pipeline stage. Step three, GitOps agent applies changes if it's different from Kubernetes cluster state. It worth to note that you know, agents like Argo CD can uh, not only apply a Kubernetes manifest, but they also can apply your Helm charts, your customize. So from what we've discussed so far, it is quite obvious to see the advantage of the GitOps. This is deployment options available today. Ask developer, do they want to deploy code with a third-party CD tool or simply follow the Git merge workflow? Or ask your operations team if they prefer Git workflow rather than using Ansible, Bash, or Makefile to deploy Kubernetes code for a traditional CICD system. Second, increase speed of software de de deployment without making things complex. Controllers can apply re and revert changes within the seconds. Third, Git as a single source of truth, bring consistency and standard across your config and application deployment. There is no more sprawl. There are other advantages that are listed here, like reliability, security, and visibility that users gaining by using GitOps. So where you can apply GitOps today? First, you can use it for continuous delivery. You can deploy your cloud native apps like Prometheus, Jaeger, FluentD. You can deploy your microservices, people even using it for MLOps. Then, you can use it for continuous operations and apply configuration on all your Kubernetes clusters to prevent configuration sprawl. You can use it for continuous security and apply your policies and compliances. And finally, perhaps something new to many of us is to deploy cloud infrastructure in a GitOps fashion. Now, let's get into the middle of our presentation and talk about flowers or Anthos in Greek. Anthos is a Google Cloud open platform for application modernization that provides you flexibility to run your applications anywhere. Embracing open standards, Anthos lets you run your applications unmodified on existing on-prem hardware investments or in the public cloud. Anthos is a 100% software-based solution. And most importantly, Anthos leverages open APIs, such as Kubernetes, Istio, and Knative, giving you the freedom to modernize any place at any time at your own pace. Anthos consists of a set of services developed to ensure that platform admins, DevOps, DevSecOps developers have successfully cloud native journey. This service is covering application modernization, hybrid and multi-cloud operations and management, and even VM to Kubernetes migration. With Anthos, you can deploy Google Kubernetes engine, not only on GCP, but also on-prem, AWS, and Azure later this year. So you can end up with GKE clusters running everywhere. And now that you can run your GKE clusters and bring your own clusters everywhere, you need to have a way to centrally manage, upgrade, and configure them. This is where Anthos cluster management comes in, in the place. It provides single pane of glass view to all your Kubernetes clusters and workloads across the clouds and on-premises. For example, in partnership with JFrog, we're enabling hybrid multi-cloud DevOps on Anthos. In this architecture diagram, we're using cloud-native hybrid CICD platform with JFrog Artifactory and Anthos GKE that allow us to deploy both on-prem and on the clouds. And now you can even to deploy your .NET workloads with Anthos and JFrog. On top of cluster management sits the service management layer, or Anthos Service Mesh, ASM for short. It's managed service mesh offering to connect, manage, and secure VMs and containers. ASM is built on top of Istio open APIs. It lets you easily create a network of deployed services and offers 
out-of-the-box telemetry and uniform observability. Anto Service Mesh transparently deploys lightweight Envoy sidecar proxy throughout your environment spanning VMs and containers. This proxy enforces uniform policies for all communication between services without requiring code or application changes. With Anto Service Mesh, developers don't need to have to hard code configurations for traffic management or ratification like they did before into the application. They can continue to ship the new features without having to worry about security and operations. Finally, application development provides solutions on Anthos Marketplace from Google and our partners. For example, in Anthos Marketplace, you can find and deploy JFrog and a factory enterprise on any cloud providers or on-premises. Also, application development layer includes capabilities of Anthos to run serverless applications via Cloud Run for Anthos based on Knative APIs and provide easy way to deploy services on Kubernetes and advanced capabilities such as advanced load balancers and auto-scaling on top of Kubernetes. Operation management simply brings observability to your apps and services. However, the main focus of our presentation today is going to be Anthos Config Management, ACM. Anthos Config Management is a multi-cluster configuration manager that helps you to have consistent configuration and policies across your clusters, whether they're on-prem or in the cloud. It is fully embraces GitOps style. It uses Git repository to centrally set and enforce policies and compliances for security apps and infrastructure. Once you declare new desired state, ACM will apply it and it will configure check for changes or drip. ACM can be easily plugged into your existing CICD system as it's not supposed to do CD part, it's really focusing on your configs and policies. ACM covers three GitHub use cases. First use case, continuous infrastructure with config connector. ACM Config Connector is a Kubernetes add-on that allows you to, to manage your Google Cloud resources through Kubernetes configuration. Yes, you can deploy anything from Spanner, even GKE using Config Connector. Right now, it only works with Google Cloud. Here we have an example of Cloud SQL MySQL database manifest that will be automatically synced as soon as it will be committed to the Git repository. It's pretty dope, right? I'm just remembering my DevOps days and building Terraform modules. And this looks so much easier to me right now. Second GitOps use case is continuous operations with config sync. Config sync enables configuration as code. It synchronizes the state of your cluster with your Git repository. As Kelsey said, day two concerns for Kubernetes users managing cluster level configs is still a challenge. With ACM config sync, you can control Kubernetes cluster configs pro and make it auditable. In this example, ACM deploying uh, role-based access Kubernetes control rules and set of namespaces across clusters in different environments. You can also use ACM to deploy cloud-native CD solutions such as Argo. However, its main use case today is limited to continuous operation and continuous security. Finally, ACM policy controller that enables GitOps continuous security. ACM policy controller is integrated with CNCF open policy agents OPA, and this uses Gatekeeper project, and provides a catalog of policy templates that turns Arigo policies in compliances uh, into Kubernetes objects. So like this manifest shows enforcement of Istio mutual TLS policies across Kubernetes clusters. Or in this diagram, you can see that ACM policy controller applies JFrog artifactory as the only allowed Docker repository as well, uh, pod security policies and container limit policies that are gonna be applied across all clusters. So today, uh, we gave you a quick look on how you can use Anthos and JFrog Artifactory and take advantage of new principles in DevOps space, such as GitOps. There's a lot of other technologies that Anthos can enable to help modernize applications, such as binary authorization, serverless cloud run, and more. To learn more about Anthos, we're inviting you to join us for a free virtual multi-week digital event. Google Next 2020, showcasing the latest innovation in cloud technology. And with that, thank you for joining us today.